Greetings, Kerbonauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is Episode 2 of The Gateway Project. If you haven't seen Episode 1 of The Gateway Project, it's going to make absolutely no sense, so I recommend you go there and you hear the little bit of background that I did uh, before you continue on in here. We have some troubling news. Like any good top secret project, we have a security force that patrols the grounds constantly. And while one of our patrols was out, we saw somebody suspicious. And we approached him and uh, we captured him and identified him as a Kerbal named Joseph. We uh, don't know anything more about him right now, but... It looks like he may have been poking around in places where he shouldn't have been, and we're not sure what he might have done. Uh, but we've got him captured, and we have put him away for now. We'll continue interrogating him, and I will get back to you with more news about that later. Right now, it's time to get back to the launch of the Unity module. So you can see here, I have to wait because of that 51.6 degree inclination that I chose to put uh, that space station on. I have to wait for Mission Control to come around and be actually underneath that orbit. Uh, that will allow me to get my rockets up from the surface to that orbit and match that orbit with the uh, minimizing the amount of fuel that it takes to get there. Uh, because if I had to make a large inclination change, of course, it would be much more expensive. So, yeah, waiting for that thing to come underneath, uh, that's what I need to do now. It remains to be seen whether or not I'm going to continue enjoying that. So far I like the extra challenge so uh, I'm gonna say that I like it. I think that was a, a good choice. And there goes the Unity module. In a future episode I will probably cover some of what I've learned about how to do uh, an inclination like that and maybe pass along some tips and tricks. But not in this video. I have plenty to talk about in this one. In fact, I'm about to deploy, so let me go to my recording from when I was flying. And there it is. All exposed to space. Let's put out some solar panels here. Communication. Grab that one. Extend that panel. All right. Look at that. We got our Unity up there. We have our tug. A couple all-purpose docking. PMAs, pressurized uh, mating adapters. Look at the lighting on that and the lighting in the background with all the city lights. Lights just make this thing so pretty, the contrast. Okay, let's get out here. Where are we? Okie dokie. So the next part here is just a bunch of node twiddling and trajectories and rendezvous and fiddling with inclination and no one cares about that junk. The only thing somewhat interesting is you can see here my apoapsis and my a descending node were meeting at exactly the same point right on that orbit and that was really cool because it allowed me to change my inclination uh, right at the apoapsis and just maximize the amount of your well minimize I guess minimize the amount of fuel that it was taking in order to do the inclination change and the uh, orbit increase at the same time back to the video goodbye that thing really moves okay so we have our orbital tug I have two docking adapters on here I have the Russian style docking adapter I gotta come up with some term for the equivalent of the Russians on my on Kerbin though and then I have our non-Russian docking adapter over here so I can go with either direction on this uh, we are going to first hook up one of these. Okay, so we're going to grab that and grab the front of Zarya. All right. Now, let's just get this part docked up. And then we'll decouple that. Also decouple the second one. And then redock with Unity. Boom! Right in there. Oh, so easy. Okay. So that is all hooked up. We are connected. All right, so what's next? We need to undock from here, then let this fly loose, and then dock this Unity module up with the PMA. Okay. Well, let's get that. 
as I watch this back again, it, it's like I can practically see myself thinking right inside the screen there, all the logistics of undocking this and redocking that and spinning around and all this stuff just because I stacked all the things on top of each other. Uh, anyway, when I get all this stuff finally hooked up, uh, I said that in video one I was going to do some EVAs to do some of my construction, but I can't do that until after the fourth docking. It isn't until after the fourth one. The fifth launch is the first time that any crew comes up here. You see right here, this module is pretty much just cargo. Uh, the fourth module is supposed to be the life support. And so until we get the life support up there, we can't actually provide any uh, space for Kerbals. There's no oxygen. And since I'm using a life support mod, uh, they would die if I didn't have the, that fourth module hooked up first. Right here I had noticed that I was rotated by 90 degrees, so I had to undock and then spin it around and redock. I don't think I understand why my docking alignment says that my nose is pointing the wrong direction and I'm traveling the wrong direction. When I've set this as my control point, control from here, and I have set this as the target, so I'm just going to do this myself. Forget the docking alignment thing. Um, I, I don't understand. Uh, whatever. I'm just going to go in. After recording this, I did figure out what was going on there. Uh, the docking node is inverted. It's a welded part in the PMA, and the docking node is inverted, which causes everything to think it's flipped upside down. But of course, what's really going on is I believe that Joseph Kerman was poking around in there, and for some reason, he's trying to sabotage this project, and we don't know why yet, and we're going to have to investigate further. But uh, that guy was definitely up to no good, and he caused those docking problems. Now getting back to the topic of life support for a second, I'm going to be able to do EVAs once I get uh, Kerbals up here, but I'd like to give you a sneak peek of what it's going to look like uh, when they do get here since the next few launches are all going to be automated unmanned launches. Some of the ways I was thinking about using these Kerbal attachment parts to do some really awesome, just fun construction up there. Uh, let's get Jebediah out here and we'll have him drop off there. So let me show you what some of these things can do. So suppose I have some part on my spaceship and uh, I need to strut it up. So you can select one of these little Kerbal attachment strut node points and you grab a link and then you can walk over here and link it up to another one and now you have a strut built in orbit. So that is really cool right there. Then there's these pipes. Same idea. The pipes create this really awesome cabling look, pipe look. So look at that. It cuts through you because there's no clipping. Uh, but when you're just looking at the ship, it's going to look awesome. Look at that. Imagine there's power cables or fluid or just something running through there. And I can hook these things up in orbit and just sort of role play it out and, and in, enjoy myself. Uh, so over here we have container bays. Now these things can be grabbed. These can be grabbed as well. Uh, and also I have modded the part so that this is also grabbable because I want to be able to move this thing around and put it on different places on the station. So uh, normally that thing isn't grabbable, but it would almost look like it docked back up. Uh, it, it's not normally grabbable, but I have made it grabbable by just editing the file. It was really easy. So, and then you can uh, say attach and put it wherever you want it. I'm going to have to tweak the uh, Z coordinate apparently. So, all right, I'll fix that later. Uh, you can grab the boxes. You can put the boxes uh, back up on to, let's see, whoops, grab the wrong thing. I needed to click store there, store. So the box goes back up there. Yeah, when I fix that clipping, then that'll look better. Uh, let's see. So you can open the boxes up and inside. Let's say you know you can take a light, uh, close that, and then you grab the light and you just attach it to something, and boom, you got a light. If you switch back over, uh, it might not work right away. No, it did. Okay. So sometimes they don't work right away. Uh, like a solar panel, I think you have to save your game after you've attached it and then reload your game and then it'll activate. Uh, but uh, until then, it just seems like it's not getting power. So uh, you can do all kinds of things in here. You can 
do struts and attach, let's move that out of the way. You can attach struts to things, you can take struts away. So in cases where I've got things up in orbit, where maybe I attach some uh, ugly struts just to hold them in place while I was launching them, I might do it by putting them in between parts of rocket that are going to deorbit and these cubic struts. And then later I can go back up and I can do some EVA cleanup and I can take away the cubic struts and just store them uh, inside one of these boxes and maybe deorbit the box and get rid of my trash that way. Over time, as the part count gets higher, I'm probably going to want to reduce the number of parts that I have. And so I've sort of pre-planned in my head a little bit of how I want to get some of those parts off there. Like if I start getting too many lights, I can cut down on lights. I can take some away, store them in the box, deorbit the box, whatever, uh, reduce the light count, reduce the parts just in general. And these things, um, you got all kinds of stuff in here. You can have you know, more attachment. Um, those little strut things, okay, couldn't do those. You can do battery packs. Uh, that's a battery pack from KW Rocketry. It's not normally grabbable, but I edited the file to make it grabbable. So again, I can just put batteries on my things. Uh, I can, let's see, we have, oh, I'm doing life support in the game. So suppose I need to be able to take my life support uh, up and attach it to the station. Uh, boom, there you go, life support. And last example is the solar panel. So you, know, you can put the solar panel on something and then you can switch over to that and the solar panel works. Uh, now, of course, like I said, you'll have to save and reload your game after some cases of attaching a solar panel. I'll bet if the sun was up right now, this would actually not be generating any power. It's not a big deal. Just a quick press F5, hold down F9, boom, you're right back in the game. Solar panel's working. So that's how I'm going to do some of my construction of the station using Kerbal Attachment System. Before I do anything else with this thing, Let's take a look at it here. Turn off the UI. I just want to get a look at it as it's going around in orbit. Just admire the beauty of what's beginning here. So we'll just fast forward a little bit and just take a few seconds to watch as it rotates through the sun. Okay, so the next step is we got to get that PMA that's highlighted here. And we got to get that moved over to the front side of Unity where the tug is. Well, I have a few more uh, dockings and undockings and redockings and undockings before this is all complete. Uh, and so we're, we're going to skip through a good portion of what's left here. Uh, you get the idea, you know, undock, redock, whatever. So I made a list of all the things and all these videos that I'm going to make that I want to cover, like little tips and tricks and things that I can explain and show how I've made things. And so far, I've only covered one of those, and that's the Kerbal Attachment System thing. And then in the middle of making this, it just so happens that uh, I bump into yet another one. So take a look at what happens here. So that results when two ships dock together. Sometimes the uh, SAS can fight each other on both sides. One wants to go one way, one wants to go the other way. And to fix that, what you need to do is uh, turn the SAS off, then do a control from here, from one of the original ships, and then you can turn the SAS back on and it'll be stable again. Now, uh, we had some debris in orbit. You remember one of the rules is no debris. So uh, we have to deorbit both of the lifters that were used to get our uh, two modules up here. And uh, so now we'll jump into the video here and see the deorbiting of the debris.
<laughs> awesome. Man, I almost got rid of all the pieces. Look at that. I just got this one little bit that was left over. That's okay. We have two lifters. Maybe we can get the second lifter to uh, just destroy everything. Uh, now, on this one, I completely burned a whole bunch of fuel. And yeah, it didn't burn up. So what happened was by burning all the fuel, I slowed myself down so much that I basically came in ballistically. And I guess apparently that doesn't create much of a shockwave. And so the whole thing went down and splashed instead of burning up. In episode one, I had said I was making a prototype which taught me a bunch of lessons. I just want to show off one of the things uh, here. This is the Zarya that I was making in my prototype. So take a look at that. Notice the part count, 45 part count, and see what that looks like. Now I'm going to load up my newer version. And this is what the Zarya looks like now. So you can see what a difference it has made. Check out this picture. Old Zarya on the left, new Zarya on the right. And tell me, come on. It was good that I quit the uh, prototype and moved on to a, a version 2 of this, right? I mean, look at that. And finally, in each video, I will do a deconstruction of what it is I've put together so you can see exactly what went into making it. Uh, you can see here, this one is using the, uh, let's see, the KLS-4, the 2.5 meter expanded launcher. Uh, and then, so I, I've already covered that in video number one, so you know what that looks like. We're just going to go straight into looking at Unity, the module that we sent up. Okay, so let's get rid of all that stuff. So this was actually Unity and a space tug. Uh, so the space tug is right there. I have that attached with some struts. Those struts, once I can get some kerbals up there, uh, those will get removed using kerbal attachment system, put into a box, and deorbited. They are you, uh, there for these struts to be connected down to the orbital tug and just provide a little extra stability. The orbital tug, look at that, we have all kinds of RCS on it. Uh, lots of an antenna here, another antenna for remote tech, three different versions of antenna for remote tech. If I need to communicate with a geosat, I have that. Anything within five million, I have that. This one is for launching uh, down here. I didn't actually show this, I guess, um, but uh, I'll do some of that in a future video. This is a camera that uh, I, I use for watching out from the docking port. And I put it there near the docking port and I can look out through there. We got some lights, the docking port on it. It's Got the CPU here, monopropellant, battery, gyroscopes, another docking camera, docking node for the non-Russian segments. Take off those struts. We have uh, the Unity module itself. Let's see. So these are regular docking on here, but all of this, this body, uh, it is here. Let's go over and take a look at it here. It is coming from, no, go down here. Where'd I put it? Maybe it's under utility. You can actually control when you're welding where you want these things to go. I should probably put them all in the same place. So here it looks like this is where I've got my PMA uh, right there. You're gonna see that up top. And here is where I have welded together the actual Unity body. So the Unity body has the one docking node up top, uh, and the little end caps and the main body. So it, it helps to cut down on the part count when you combine these things together. These are fuel canisters. Uh, but I have drained them using the uh, tweakables, so they didn't actually have any fuel in them when I did the bonding of the parts together. So we got some extra stuff here, lights, I guess that's about it. These are just docking nodes on top of these. Um, I mentioned what my problem was earlier, is that uh, when I did the welding of the parts, they got internally upside down. I haven't tried to figure out how to get them un upside down. If I want to fix that, it's possible I would need to actually invert this and put that clamp on the top and then re-weld it. 
So if I flipped that over and welded it like that, it would have been okay. But because I welded it upside down, uh, it believes that I'm going in this direction, but the docking clamp is upside down. So that's it. That's the Unity. The next launch is Zvezda, KSS number three. Well, that covers exactly two of the launches, not counting the satellites, uh, that it's going to take to put this gorgeous beauty into space. And uh, it covers also exactly two of the 50 different things that I, I have on my list that I'd like to communicate, little tips and tricks and things that I've seen and learned along the way. So obviously I have a lot of material to communicate in these videos, but uh, that's going to do it for this time. And I will see you next time. See you later, Kerbinauts.